subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Most of us are familiar with the bird called dodo. We know it's extinct and it was flightless and we know that it was endemic to the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. Today, most of us hear about the dodo for the first time when with children either in a biology class in school as an example of an animal that went extinct because of human activity or we hear about the dodo as a humorous idiotic personality in cartoons. The dodo is also the most commonly mentioned example of a species that has lost its ability to fly. Dodos went extinct pretty rapidly after their discovery within less than 100 years and the subsequent depictions in art have also evolved to look quite different from what the animal looked like in real life. Today's video is going to be all about dodos thanks to a paper that was published in the journal Historical Biology, which is a journal of paleobiology. The paper authored by Dutch researchers tracks how the depiction of the dodo evolved in cartoons and art since it went extinct, how these compare anatomically to what the dodo actually looked like and to naturalistic or scientific drawings, what the dodo's DNA tells us about its ancestry, and if the dodos were actually stupid in real life. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The dodo, scientific name Raphis cuculatus, is known to us so far entirely through depictions in art and writings from the 17th century. We of course do not have photographs from this time period because the first camera came at least 200 years later. Even among these early drawings of dodo from this time period, only some were drawn by directly observing dodos in real life. Most other drawings were in fact based on previous drawings or text descriptions of the birds or taxidermy specimens. Even then, all of these pieces of art put together number only about a little over than 20 from this time period. The dodo was discovered in the late 1500s by sailors and traders. The very first mention of the bird in a historical account was by Dutch sailors in 1598. And the very last sighting that is confirmed was in 1662. So that's less than 100 years from discovery to extinction. In fact, at the time period, people were extremely unfamiliar with the concept of an animal going extinct because of human activity and that too within their lifetimes. So for several decades, it was actually thought that the extinction of the dodo was a myth. While the bird was endemic or native to Mauritius, it was also sighted in India and Japan and Europe in the 1600s when the birds were actually taken out of Mauritius into these regions. We don't have many full fossils of the dodo because not enough time has passed for the fossilization process to complete. But we do have sub-fossils, which are bodies that are in the process of becoming fossils and are only partially fossilized. From sub-fossil data, we know that the dodo was probably about a meter tall and maybe weighing about 15 kilos on average. In most art, it is depicted as having brownish grey feathers or plumage with yellow feet like chicken, tail plumage, no crown feathers on its head and a beak that is slightly long, is yellow and black in colour and can be curved. In 1842, Johannes Reinhardt, who supported Darwin's theory of evolution, started to study the dodo skull. He was a zoologist and from his work he proposed that the dodo was anatomically similar to the pigeon and was in fact a ground pigeon. This idea was immediately met with ridicule and was rejected but in a few years it started to become widely accepted as many other scientists also came forward to support this based on their own work on a specimen that was displayed at the Oxford University Museum. This specimen is still present there, it's called the Oxford dodo and even today is the most complete specimen that we have. It is one of the four specimens that were brought to Europe in the early 1600s and is the only one containing actual soft tissue of dodo in existence today. The specimen has a relatively preserved head and foot and its foot was then sequenced for DNA in 2002. 
Using DNA data, researchers were able to confirm that the dodos are actually pigeons and that the closest extant relative or living relative of the dodo today is the Nicobar pigeon from the Nicobar Islands. It is thought that the abundance of food coupled with the lack of predators in the island of Mauritius made the birds lose their ability to fly. The birds also ate fruits and seeds and nuts and given that there were no other major big herbivores competing for the same food groups, the birds were also able to grow quite large in size. Most of the contemporary descriptions that were made by directly observing a dodo when it was alive were made in ship's logs by sailors of the Dutch East India Company vessels. Mauritius during the late 1500s and early 1600s was still a Dutch colony, so there were a lot of Dutch sailors who docked here. Among these accounts, only some are reliable. Most are based on second-hand accounts and none are actually written by scientists. In these early Dutch East India Company logs, the dodo was described as being larger than a swan. The sailors said that dodo meat was of a pleasant flavor, but the longer it was cooked, the less soft it became. Many descriptions and accounts say that the bird ate stones, which is not uncommon. Many birds, animals and reptiles do eat stones called gastroliths that stay in their intestinal tract and grind food to aid in digestion. We've even found them in dinosaur fossils. A lot of the text that describes the dodo describes the color of plumage, the lack of flight, tail feathers and beaks pretty consistently. But when it comes to actual drawings and art, there are quite a few differences. A lot of the art was influenced by artistic styles and also by other art of dodos. The only known sketches of living dodos made by observing them in Mauritius was made by the Dutch artist Joris Eustens Lerl in the early 1600s. A lot of the other drawings were actually made of stuffed birds, taxidermy displays and other depictions of the dodo. Currently, there's an active ongoing effort in the scientific community to hunt down all historical depictions of the dodo. So we do keep discovering more and more pieces of art. The most accurate anatomical depiction of the dodo in art is thought to have been painted by the Mughal painter Ustad Mansur in 1625 of a dodo among a bunch of other birds in Surat. The bird belonged to the menagerie of the Emperor Jahangir and it was also cited by Peter Mundy, the famous British traveller and writer who made the first ever record of being served cha or tea in China. Since there were only a handful of birds that were alive, individual birds were in fact famous and can actually be tracked in art. So this painting of the bird that was in Jahangir's garden was not discovered until 1958 where it turned up in Russia. But meanwhile, another painting that was made just a year later in 1626 became a standard for how dodos were depicted. The painting is called Edwards Dodo and the bird belonged to the famous ornithologist George Edwards. It was painted by Roland Savry. This was painted from real life and thus became the inspiration for many subsequent dodo sketches. It in fact shows the dodo to be a bit stout or fat. All depictions after 1638 were made from and based on earlier images with exaggerated nostril, beak and body shapes. Many depict the bird as fat, which could be because after they were transported to their new locations away from Mauritius, they were not fed the correct diet. Additionally, researchers in this paper described that a lot of the fat dodos in art could actually be based on males who puff out their feathers in a sexual display behavior, much like pigeons do today too. Dodo started to slowly fall off the public imagination until Lewis Carroll came along in 1865 and wrote Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. In the book, there is a character who's a dodo. Lewis Carroll and Alice Liddell actually used to visit the Oxford University Museum and the character of the dodo in the book was actually based on the Oxford specimen itself. The dodo in the book was in fact a caricature of the author, but this depiction of the stuttering, stumbling dodo instantly popularized the bird in children's cartoons 
And as the authors describe it, it set the stage for the bird to be a personality, not just a product of natural history. The authors of the study analyzed a total of 179 images from 1601 to 2014. These images of dodos were either naturalistic or scientific or non-scientific, humorous, in cartoons or in other kinds of art. The focus was to study the change in the face and the head of the dodo. They managed to trace the evolution of the depiction of dodo in art and cartoons and how the images went from scientifically accurate to exaggerated long pointy or large beaks after the publication of Alice in Wonderland. The scientists discovered that firstly there wasn't much art from the mid 1600s to the mid 1700s. Then they noticed the change in beak shape starts in the mid 1800s after the publication of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Until this point, variations and cartoonish depictions were few, but it started to increase drastically after the publication of this book. Then later from 1950 onwards, this variation became quite diverse as modern cartoons and animations started to use the dodo. Naturalistic animations and images continued to remain consistent. The authors state that there could be two reasons why the dodo was appealing to cartoonists. One is that because of Alice's adventures in Wonderland, it became a humorous personality. And the other is that in general, it was often described as lazy, stupid and unfit to survive. The dodos in real life, of course, were the exact opposite. They were uniquely adapted to their ecosystem and thrived extremely well until humans came along to the island. They had survived millennia of volcanism and climate changes. Because they were not exposed to humans or other large predators, they were fearless of humans, just like penguins are today in Antarctica. So this made them easy prey. But humans didn't directly eat or cull dodos a lot. The problem was not with direct hunting. The problem with the dodos was that humans did two things. One is that when settlers came to Mauritius, they started introducing non-native animals to the island, such as cats and dogs and monkeys. These animals competed with food resources, with territory, and also destroyed a lot of dodo nests. Secondly, humans also cut down trees. Mauritius was a largely forested island and rampant deforestation occurred when colonizers came to the island. This of course destroyed the dodo habitat. When we say the word dodo, today it is so closely associated with stupidity and clumsiness, but we don't know why the bird started to be called that and who first started calling the bird that. The very first Dutch soldiers who recorded instances of sighting the bird called it Walkvogel. Another Dutch ship called them Dronte or Swollen. It is possible that the Dutch also called the bird Todd Ars, Todd Ars or Fat Bottom or Big Bottom. This is because the birds actually have a knot of tail feathers at their hind end. But the word Dodo was in fact first used in 1602. There were several accounts that claimed that the Portuguese were calling the bird Dodar or Dodo or Dodo, but there's no verification of any of this. Most likely, it is possible that the name is just an onomatopoeic version of the bird's call, like the pigeons. The pigeons have a two-note call, which we describe as cuckoo, and the Dodo sound probably resembled a doo-doo sound. Nevertheless, there is still an active effort to understand the dodo better and hunt for historical sources of information about the bird. And today, despite all the cartoons with exaggerated beak features and untrue descriptions of intelligence, the bird continues to remain a prime example of a creature that went extinct purely because of human activity.